You're listening to FemFluence Radio, created for women desiring more influence and affluence and are looking for other women who want the same. I'm your host, Jennifer Kemp, but you can call me Jen. I'm a serial entrepreneur and founder who's built four multi-million dollar companies. I'm also a mom to three amazing humans and a wifey to the self-proclaimed slay at home dad. Whoa, (laughs) that makes me tired just saying out loud. On this show, we'll have the real BS-free conversations that every woman wants to have, but no one's talking about with the honesty we deserve. We'll chat on the intersection of too muchness and not enoughness, what aligned success looks and feels like, and what it takes to dismantle old systems, beliefs, and thinking that get in the way of what we really want. If you're an ambitious woman, Looking for a collective that will support you as you grow into the next level leader you and everyone else knows, likes, and trusts? Then stick around because you're already home and amongst friends. Now, let's go build longer tables together. Hey, FemFluence fam. Today, I'm talking about something that has truly shifted and transformed my entire life. It's changed the way that I woman that I mother, that I wife, that I friend, that I sister, that I daughter, and especially how I lead her. And it's so important that I I knew that it was a great topic to talk about on FemFluence Radio. Recently, I was at a business event where I was one of the keynote speakers. And when I finished my talk, a woman in the audience asked me one of the most important questions I've ever been asked in public. She asked, Besides the visibility and profitability, how are you handling your life now after the quote unquote success, but especially with your kids and the relationships that you're in? And then she went on to apologize, finishing her question by saying, I know this isn't really a business question, but I'm really curious how you're doing it all. Now, before I tell you what I said, I want to acknowledge something. She was right. There was actually a time in my life that I wouldn't have considered what she asked a business question. But today, as a leader, I know better. It's 100% a business and career question because business and career is part of your life, not your life. And it's definitely not separate from it. And that's also why I consider the B word one of the most dangerous words out there. And that word is balance. I think balance is a crock of bull. I feel that balance is a concept that shames us into thinking that if we're out of balance, we're not doing things right. Which for me, leads to resentment, burnout, overall feeling like I'm constantly underachieving. Basically, it makes me feel like I suck. And I also believe that the pursuit of balance is actually messing us up so bad that it's basically self-inflicted torture. I don't believe in the pursuit of everything. I believe in the pursuit of anything. And that's why I want to offer you the idea of alignment over balance. In fact, if you choose to be an ambitious woman, and obviously you are because you're listening, you're the type of woman who is striving for more. And whether that's inside of a company where you're what I call an intrapreneur because the most successful female executives and leaders have entrepreneurial mindsets. They're looking to build a legacy of results inside of an organization. Women who choose entrepreneurship, starting their own businesses and creating their own economy in that kind of way are the same. We're looking to do more. And the fact is, in order to be ambitious, you actually are out of balance a lot. That's part of our superpower. That's part of our strength. And the key is, is that to think 
in terms of alignment over balance. What that does for you is it makes you in full control of your decisions. When you're in alignment, it makes you in full control of your decisions. You feel less guilt, if any at all, about saying no to some things. And then you feel a full body yes to the things that you actually want. So I didn't tell you what I told that woman at that business event. So I want to go back to that question that she asked me. Jen, outside of the visibility and profitability and the quote unquote success that you've achieved to this date, how do you manage the other things like your kids and your relationships? And this is what I said to her. I said, my adult life is divided into two hemispheres before I started living in my values and after. And what's crazy is I actually got a round of applause by saying that in the room. And it really, it really surprised me. It struck me as, gosh, I mean, I was just saying exactly what had happened for me. But I realized, and this is partly why I started Femfluence Radio, is that so many times as ambitious women, we don't want to say out loud that before there was a this, this success or this striving for more, usually before that happened, there was a struggle or a challenge. And I want to be honest about that. Now, in the last episode, I promised to share with you how I transform my own pink slime into less tolerations and better agreements. And I've learned to make clean decisions, keyword clean, that not only give me much more time, energy, and yes, even money, they've given me what I really wanted so much more, which is a better relationship with myself and a better relationship with those that I love. And I want to share this framework with you today to help you start determining what your unique filter is that works for you. See, this decision-making framework is a filter that I put things I'm considering through. And you can create your own so you can feel more at peace. Because the goal is, is that we want to feel more happy. We want to feel more joy. We want to feel more fulfilled. We want to feel like we're available to take care of ourselves and the other people in our life. And the truth is, again, we can't do everything. And that's why when I discovered this framework I'm going to share with you, it changed everything for me. And now I'm in a place where not perfectly, but about 80% of the time, I'm feeling really good about what I say yes to and what I say no to. So let's first talk about how I actually figured this framework out. And it wasn't actually academic. (laughs) I actually found out through two moments in my life. And the first moment in my life was my last corporate job. I was a very (laughs) well-known executive at one of the biggest telecommunications companies in our state. And I lived in Hawaii at the time. And I had just completed a major project, the, one of the biggest multi, multi-million dollar projects the company has ever done. And I think I mentioned in an earlier episode that early on in my career, a female mentor of mine told me, Jen, if you want to get that corner office and you want to be considered for promotions and raises, take the projects that nobody wants. Basically what she was saying is take risk and those that take risk get noticed. That guess what? That's true in the entrepreneurial world too. It's very much served me uh, when I decided to leave the corporate world. But here's the thing. I just wrapped up that project taken out of my job in the business to business department in the company and my counterpart who was male and in the business and consumer department this project was actually their department's main thing but if you know anything if you're listening and you come from the corporate world you know that the business to business division typically brings in more money and more profit than the business to consumer division this is true of all big companies and all big brands except for amazon because 
their Amazon. <laughs> but anyway, when that project was going to happen, and it was a greenfield project, meaning it was going to change and add millions and millions of dollars of revenue to the top line for the company. And when they were looking for the person to lead the project, I volunteered to you know, spearhead the initiative. It took two years. It was a lot of chaos, a lot of change management inside of an organization that had a union as well as, you know, steadfast management positions that had been there for a long time. And this new initiative was going to change the entire way the company did business. And I'm proud to say that after two years of working with all the stakeholders in the company, I had the privilege of saying we implemented it successfully. Obviously, no implementation goes perfectly and definitely there were bugs, but let's just say it was a it was a huge success. And I was really proud of it. And then I was very happy to hand the initiative back over to my counterpart in business consumer and go back to my old job with my awesome team and keep doing that job. Well, because I still had access to the budget, I found out six months later that as I had, I never got offered the job to actually take over the main project. And what I found out is that my male counterpart, who, by the way, I just want to mention, we are still really great friends to this day. So I'm not dogging him out. Okay. He got a hundred thousand dollar raise and he was next in the succession for the CMO role in the company after I had successfully implemented the most transformational project the company had ever seen. So basically I wrote him his raise and his promotion. And it was in that moment, that's what I want to take you to, in that moment, of course I was pissed. I was frustrated. But I also realized something. I realized that no matter how smart I was, And no matter how much I could rally teams and how I could overcome challenges and how I could negotiate things, that the system was not set up for someone like me to succeed. Notice I didn't say the person because it wasn't his fault, my counterpart, that this was happening. It was a system that didn't allow fairness and equity. And in that moment my values became very clear to me because my values had become violated. A lot of people teach values. You can read a lot of books on them, etc. And they're, they're well and good. And obviously, since I'm a brand futurist and a business strategist, you know, building brand values for companies is something that we do with our clients. But this is something deeper. What I discovered about me as a leader is that if I continue to tolerate injustice. And if I continue to tolerate that I actually did not have full control over my destiny, I didn't have full control over my future paycheck. And it was that moment that I decided I was no longer going to work for anyone else. Now, I had two kids to feed. Let me be clear. They were young. (laughs) They were about eight and uh, gosh, 12 at the time. And I said to myself, I can't responsibly leave my job. I was making great money, ladies. I was making $250,000 a year plus my bonus. I had a parking spot with my name on it. I had all of the ego marks of, and it would be silly for me to leave my job. But I could not shake knowing what I knew. And I could not shake knowing that I could do this on my own if I just took the risk on me, if I bet on me. And it took a violation of my values. It took a toleration to become 100% intolerable for me to create a nine-month exit plan where I left my company and started my first business. Now, I'll tell you the whole story over the course of this first season in Femfluence, because I bet there are women listening in that wished that they had an option to exit, whether it's exiting the corporate world or even your business. Because I want to tell you on this particular radio show, we don't judge how you choose to lead. 
Now, I've chosen entrepreneurship and founding companies as the way for me, but I had to do that because my highest value I found out after that moment of finding out that the system was working against me is autonomy. Autonomy is my highest value. And that's a little bit different than freedom because autonomy means that I have full control over my decisions. Freedom means, you know, that and pretty much having, you know, a lifestyle free from anything. And to me, honestly, ladies, I love to work. I actually enjoy working. I don't enjoy killing myself at work. I don't enjoy hustling, although I will hustle for the things that I want, for the things that are in alignment with my values. But I knew what I wanted was I just didn't want anybody to tell me what to do. And I knew that I had the skills and the talents and the gifts to do it on my own. And I I gave myself not just nine months to exit, but I gave myself a two-year goal to hit some specific milestones. And that's part of the story. And that's part of the moment where I found out what my values were. I found out from what I got violated in. So that's the first tip. We've talked about tolerations. We've talked about pink slime. Now I want you to ask yourself, what violates the values you think you have? Because that's the first start. Not just looking at what you think you value, but think about the things that violate everything you believe in. Write those down and look at them. And that's a great starting point for starting to do yours. Now, the second moment in my life that helped me create this, what I call values-driven framework, and I'm going to go deeper in the values-driven framework in a future episode, but I want to tell you about that moment. The moment was when I decided, I mentioned my husband earlier this season, that I decided to start dating again after a divorce after being a single mom for a number of years and after having my business also for a number of years. And I had the autonomy I wanted, but I noticed that I really craved a relationship with somebody who I felt could be an incredible support and companion and a person who I could talk to and and all of that. Because, and at the same time, <laughs> to be honest with you, I was resigned to possibly dying an old maid. Uh, because although, you know, I don't, you know, I know that I was a catch. I really do believe that people would tell me all the time. You're such a catch. I'm like, I don't really think so because relationships is not an area I'm great at, especially with men. And again, we'll go into that a little bit more. We'll talk about all these kinds of things on Femfluence Radio, but I did realize when I met my now husband that he was the one that I felt really complimented who I was and vice versa. And so much so that I hired, get this, I hired a coach to help me understand what my values and his values were so that we could communicate. Because I knew at the time my husband had a very successful job at the medical center and he had his own career and he was doing his own thing. And I had my business and I had my two girls. And yes, we loved each other, but I know, or I found out that marriage is not just about, you know, loving each other. It's actually about liking each other. I tell people all the time, I'm more concerned if I'm still in like with you (laughs) versus in love with you, because it's that that you need during the hard times. And so I hired both a good friend of mine who I had met in a personal development leadership training, who was a certified facilitator of Dr. John Martini's work. And if you don't know Dr. John Martini, we'll put a link to his site in the show notes. And he has this framework called the values factor. And I heard my good friend, Jonathan Sugai, who is the person I hired, talk about his training and how it transformed his life. And I wanted the same thing. And so I called him and I said, hey, John, you know, would you take me on as a client? I re- I'm in this new relationship and I'm very happy with the success I've had 
in business so far. But I want to make sure that this relationship works out. And I also want to make sure that I'm staying connected to my children. And frankly, I'm feeling very disconnected from my family and my friends because these past couple years, I've had to really focus and put my head down to build this company and this livelihood. And I'm finally making enough money because I didn't make tons of money overnight leaving my great job, okay? But once I finally hit momentum inside of my business, that's when I started to also realize that, gosh, my relationships were in atrophy. I wasn't as connected and I wanted that so badly. So I hired John to be, Jonathan Sugai to be my, my coach. And he walked us through the Demartini values factor. And I can't go into all of that in any way. I'm not qualified to teach you the values factor as I'm not a certified facilitator. But I can tell you that going through that work and then adding it to the list of violations that formed my thinking and then looking at the way that I personally looked at life and that now that I was free from the expectations of an outside job and a paycheck that held me prisoner, that I could really look at what those values are. So again, in a future episode, I'm actually going to go deeper under this values-driven framework. But for now, besides listing what violates your values, I consider there to be three categories of values if you're a femfluencer. And what a femfluencer is, to remind you, is any woman who's a leader in her business or someone else's. So the first type of values in the framework are your personal values. So those are the things that personally drive and motivate you. And if they were violated, what would cause you to act against or for them? Okay, so I'll give you an example. My five highest personal values, I've already shared one of them with you, are autonomy, justice, generosity, leadership, and legacy. That is my personal Brita filter for impurities. And what I mean by that is that now, whenever I'm making a big decision, whether it's to speak at an event or launch a new product or, you know, spend time with somebody, whether it's a friend or a colleague, it goes through this filter. Does it align with my value system? And if it doesn't, and I can be honest about that, it's a clear and clean no. So the other thing that I look at is if there's something that may not fully feel like it aligns on the surface, but there's a link that I can make to my values that ends up giving me the result that I want, that's when I say yes to it. And the other thing about the personal values is that the people in your life, especially your partner slash spouse or, and or your children, they have their own set of personal values too. And what's important is, is to understand and know what they are and have conversations. And once you know what each other's values are, you can see what motivates them and you can actually incentivize your kids, especially to do what you'd like them to do. <laughs> and also your spouse. And this specific thing, facilitated by Jonathan Sugai through Dean Martini's work and me listing out my own personal uh, moments of violation in my life, helps my husband and I and my kids and I, and now even my mom and the rest of my family have better conversations, not perfect conversations. And we still have conflict like normal freaking people do, okay? But all I'm saying is 80% of the time, we're doing pretty good. And that's because we know them. Because when I make decisions from this place, even though I know that it's possible that someone else may not like the decision I'm making, because they're my values and I know what they are, I'm not just going through life on autopilot, but I'm clear and clean about my focus. I feel strong. I feel compassionate. And I feel confident in seeing the decision I make through. And this is what I mean by making clean decisions. And this is what I mean when I opened up this episode talking about 
a framework for clean decisions. Now, the second type of values are your brand values. And that's true, especially if you're a founder, an entrepreneur, a business owner. And if you work at, a organi- at work in an organization, your organization has brand values, right? Um, and so what brand values are, are what your business wants to embody so deeply that it forms the heart and the soul and the essence of why you exist and how you operate the business around it. So in Femfluence, we actually have, Femfluence is is an organism, it's a body, it's a platform I'm building with you to help us build longer tables and to create massive influence and affluence because I believe when women get wealthy in their relationships, their health and their pocketbook, we make way bigger impact together. And so, of course, the Femfluence platform has its own brand values. And I actually have, this is a sub-brand of one of the companies that I own. Now, in the world of Femfluence, these are our values. They're autonomy, intersectionality, connection, ambition, values-driven, and imperfection. That last one might be kind of a surprise to you and I can't wait to talk about it. But notice the top value is autonomy, just like it's my top personal value. But the truth is, is that the third value in the values driven framework is the value of how you see society. And I'm going to talk a little bit more about that in the last episode of this particular season on Femfluence Radio. I'll leave it there for now. Now, for the rest of the season, we're going to discuss these values of Femfluence, how they affect us as women, and what we can do to link our personal values to them if we want to make the changes we feel are necessary in the world. We're going to explore how this cultural shift and owning our Femfluence will make us more wealthy in spirit, health, and yes, our bank accounts when we commit to building those longer tables I keep talking about. So to help you start forming your own personal values, I'm going to share the resources I mentioned in this show along with a worksheet that will help you sort them out, okay? And on the next episode, I'm going to tell you all about how I twisted my top value in such an incongruent, unaligned way that I lost millions of dollars and a whole lot more. Yeah, that happened. It's something I want you to know so you'll never have to experience the same as severely as I did. So I'll see you in the next episode and I'll tell you all about it then. For now, have an incredible day. Thanks for listening to Femfluence Radio. If you resonated with this episode, please leave us a review and let other women know about it. Remember, we're building longer tables here. Follow us on Instagram at femfluence underscore official to stay in the conversation and also visit femfluence.com to sign up and receive things I only give to our listeners and friends. I look forward 